Hello, in this video we are going to go through uh, all the steps necessary to bring in Marvelous Designer Baked Animation, simulated animation, into Unreal Engine 4. As you can see here in the software used for this pipeline, Character Created 3 Pipeline, iClone 7, uh, 3D Exchange Pro, Marvelous Designer and of course Unreal Engine. Now as I mentioned in the previous video, you can you use the same pipeline uh, with different softwares like Blender or Maya, uh, as long as you know how to work with Morph Targets within those applications. I am sharing this uh, pipeline because uh, this is the pipeline I'm using at the moment. If you And if you're using the same software that I'm using, you can follow along. Don't get discouraged by all these steps. There are 24 steps in this pipe in this process, but most of these steps are just clicking buttons in the applications. There are only three steps, these three steps here, where we actually have to do some work. Uh, so create the animation within iClone, then simulate and create the animation of the garment within Marvelous Designer, and finally create the morph animation, which is the, the step that takes a uh, longer time to achieve. If you're good with Python and you understand this pipeline, you can create a script for Maya or Blender, where a lot of these steps would be programmed and easier to to achieve in that way especially this step here creating the morph animation in this video i'm not going to show you how to create the animation the garment or the character i'm assuming you already have those in place let's get started and we start here with the first step so start in character created three with no garment and the default pose let's see what that means so here in character created three i have my character and if i go into modify and i go into edit pose previously i chose a pose to be my default pose and i pressed set as default so now if i press default i go into my default pose this is my default pose, this is the, the pose that I'm going to use to create my garment inside of Marvelous Designer. This is the default pose, so this is what the, the step means, starting character creator tree with a default pose. So second step, we're going to send it to iClone. In first frame, we go to edit motion layer and we click default. Okay, let's do that step. So in character created tree, I can click this button, send character to iClone, or I can go to file export and send character to iClone. So I'll click here and it will send my character into iClone. And here is my character. In the very first frame with my character selected, I'm going to go into the animations tab. I'm going to go into edit motion layer and I'm going to press default just to make sure that he's in the default pose as it starts. This is to make sure that the garment doesn't come in in the wrong uh, placement. Okay, so the third step is to create the animation in iClone and we have to make sure that our first frame has the default T or A pose and it's blending into the animation start, into the beginning of the animation. Let's see what that means. That means that when I bring in this character with the animation into Marvelous Designer, I want it to start in his default pose, T or A pose, so that I can create the garment in that pose and then I can blend that in into the animation. The simulation will bring the garment into the animation. Uh, we'll see what that means once we get into Marvelous Designer. So I'm gonna go up to 20 frames forward which in Marvelous Designer is going to be 10 frames because this works, we're working here at 60 FPS and in Marvelous Designer we're gonna be working at 30 FPS. So here I'm just gonna do a control left bracket to uh, set the start of the animation at 20 here and I'm going to bring in an animation uh, on my character and of course I can use all the different tools in iClone to create that animation although I already have an animation uh, created for my character okay so I've just imported the animation that is the animation I'm not a professional animator as you can see now that I have this animation you can see that I have the blending going on in here so I can bring the blending all the way up to my first frame. And then we have this blending from the pose into the animation. So that in Marvelous Designer we have enough time uh, to simulate the garment movement moving into this pose. This is so that we don't have to change, uh, grab the garment and bring it into the, the character. 
Uh, this is just optional. Uh, you don't actually need to do this step. If you like, you can just bring the garment inside of Marvelous Designer, but it's, it's gonna take you a bit longer to achieve that. Fourth step is save collect clip, add motion plus to library. Once we have this animation going on for us, I can select the end of my animation and I can control right bracket to set that to be the end of the animation. And I can come here to my collect clip track and select all of it. Then right click on the collect clip and add motion plus to library. Press OK and it should bring you to your motion plus directory. Here we can give it a name, save it so that we can export it from Character Creator. So this is going to be called the Grim Scare and I'll just press save and here we go. Step five click edit in character created tree and we in character created tree we're going to save the avatar with our character selected we can go into the first frame here in the modify tab we press edit in character created tree this will load up our avatar in character created tree just to make sure that everything is right uh, i'll say no to that and now we can save our character if i go into the content I go to my avatar, that's my character, and I'll just press this button to replace the previous uh, character that I had in there. So step six, we're going to export from Character Creator 3 with animation, and we can use the UV4 template. All we have to do is file, export, FBX clothed character, and we can choose the Unreal uh, preset here. And I'm going to choose delete hidden faces because I have some hidden faces here on the skull. I'm hiding the head because the skull is a different object here. And the way I'm hiding the head, by the way, is by using a fake cloth. So I've, I've, I've added a, a plane here as a dummy. You can reduce the opacity or set it as a dummy and use that as a cloth to hide some of the mesh parts. So if you come here to custom, I can click this icon and I can select my motion plus um, animation that I've saved and we're gonna export that so I'll save that as an FBX right there okay so step seven we're going to import that animation into Marvelous Designer so if I come here to Marvelous Designer I can file import FBX and import that animation so if I press OK, I have these settings, animation, auto scale turned on. Don't move the garment to start position, just leave it as it's so. We don't have a garment yet. Press OK, and it should import our character with the animation. For some reason, the character comes up like this with some uh, problems in the texture. Uh, maybe if you export uh, to with the Maya template, you might have a better result but this is the system that I've been using and it works fine with me. Now you can see that it comes with a, a, a pose instead of a T pose like we had there, but because it's in our animation, our first frame, it's T. As soon as I go into animation and I start moving my playhead, I can go into the T pose right there. So if I come here to simulation, I can start creating my garment. And like I said before, I'm not going to show you how to create a garment in Marvelous Designer. So I will create the garment and I'll pause the video, create the garment. Now, once the garment is created, one thing that I like to use is do a skin offset of five. Uh, you can try a smaller number if you like, just to make sure that there are not going to be any protrusions of the skin through the cloth mesh. Also, I want to make sure my UVs are nice and packed. You can rotate, scale and change the UV placement. And once you're happy with that, you make sure that you right click and you press fifth fit to UV to unified zero one to make sure they are all in the same UV space. And once we have that in place, we can save the project. And now we can do step eight to simulate, create the animation. So if we go into animation here, we can press this button to simulate the first in the first frame just to make sure that it's how we like it okay so it's now simulating i've already simulated it before that's why you don't see anything changing and we still have our animation in here so if i press the record button you can see that it goes from that step into the beginning of the animation so i can i can press here stop i can go to my first frame which remember we had frame 20 
inside of iClone, which means that here frame 10 will be the beginning of the animation because it's we're working with 30 fps here so if i go to the beginning of my animation i can simulate and get the clothes to a resting pose here make sure that it's looking how i like it so i can pull some bits here just by left clicking i want that to look more like that the sleeves are okay the hoodie is okay okay so I'm happy with that. Once I'm happy with that, I can now press record and record the rest of the, uh, the animation. Okay, so once the animation stops recording, I can preview it. I can come here and preview it going into real time. And that's how my animation is looking. I'll make sure there's no protrusions. There's no, everything is looking fine because this is going to be my end animation. Now we can move on to step nine, export the first frame as object and animation as object sequence. Let's see what that means. So if you go here to our first frame and that's our first frame, we can then come to file, export, and I'll export obj so i'll export this as i'll call it base you could call it the name of your garment whatever the, the garment is save that as an obj make sure you deselect select all avatars f select all patterns on we're going to select single object weld thin because i'm using a thin uh, vest here you choose thick if it was a thick vest with thickness uh, make sure unified UV coordinates is selected so we send out our UVs as well. You can choose uh, centimeters, Dash Studio, and that's about it. We press OK and we're going to export it. Don't worry if that happens. As soon as you touch your playhead again and you start moving it, your character goes back into place. So that is done. Now we can export just the animation. To do that, we know that we're going to start here at frame 10. And that's where our animation plays. So if I play with my loop selected, this is what we are going to export. Now notice there's a little pop in the in the close there. You can see pop. Don't worry about that. We can fix that with the morphs uh, when we're creating the, the morph animation. With this animation, we can come in and export. And now we're going to export the obj sequence call this the name of my animation with in this case is the scare animation i'll save pretty much the same options like before and i select play region only because it's the selected region of the animation and i'll press ok and this will export every single object as a different frame of the animation okay now we can go into step 10 importing the first frame in i clone and here is where we can add or create a material for our uh, vest. So here we are back in iClone. I'm going to go to File, Import, select Import, and I'll select my base. Open that up, and I'll make sure there are no protrusions. It's in the right place. And the reason why it is in the right place is because in the beginning, when we did this step two of in first frame click edit motion layer and go to edit motion layer and you click default make sure that there's no protrusions now when we import it that's important that's an important step okay so i have my object here and if i go into my scene you can see that my object is uh, added as a prop now i want to make this object not a prop I want to make it part of the skeletal mesh. That is when we attach it to the character root. Like we've seen in that step, we can come here and create uh, add our material. So if you want to create a different texture for your garment, this would be the right time. So you could go into Substance Painter and create a new project. And because I clone and character creator work with OpenGL, you would choose OpenGL. And I'm just going to choose a 2K texture and you would select that object, that base object, press OK. And here we have our object with our UVs as we've seen in, uh, inside of Marvelous Designer. So here we can go into texture sets, make mesh maps. I know I, this wasn't part of the tutorial, but I might as well show it to you. So I'll just untick that because I don't need it. Do a 2K here and I'll use Poly Mesh. And these are usually the settings that I use so two by two and i'll bake this and i can here change my 
the name of this and I'll just call this vest. And I, I just used the smart material that I had uh, previously made for this vest. Once it's done, I can go into file, export textures, and I usually choose one of the first ones here. So I'm not using alpha, so I'll just choose document channels, normal plus AEO, no alpha. And that's going to give me all the stuff that I need, including the normal of OpenGL. I'll export that and then import it into iClone. So you can change the name of the material here. It comes up with this material from Marvel's designer. I'll just call it vest underscore matte. And if I go into my texture folder here, I can start dragging and dropping these textures onto the little boxes here. AO goes into AO. The OpenGL normal goes into bump. Yes, yeah, so you get a message, you choose normal map, you say okay. And roughness goes into roughness, metallic into metallic, and so on. And here we have base color. Okay. So now we have a texture in our garment. Okay, so that was step 10. And now we're going to go into step 11. Attach, attach to character root. If I come here and I select my vest, go into my modify tab here, I can go into the attach area here and I can click parent. Then if I go back into my scene, I can click my character base. And now you can see that that base, and I can just change the name for vest. You can see that that base is now part of the skeletal structure. And if I go here into modify, this will bring us to the next step, which is deselect, move, rotate, and scale inheritance. That we can achieve by clicking this button here, and we get the inheritance here, inherit. So we deselect, move, rotate, and scale. We press OK. I believe the next step is to press zero out in transform. So that is simply clicking this button here. Make sure you're in the first frame as well. So we just click that button. Make sure that everything is zeroed out. Sometimes it's not when you import it. Next step would be step 14. Select character and go to morph creator. We select our character, not our vest. So make sure the character is selected in scene. You can click the character there and now this is where you need to have a 3d exchange at least the pro version you don't need to have the, the all all the version so we go into the animation tab we scroll down and we look for morph creator and we press that don't worry if you get a message like this just press ok now we are inside of morph creator here we have our vest and the first thing we want to do and i believe this is in here is to select our garment open up this list and we select our garment. Then next step is import all frames of the object sequence. So if I come here and I press this button to create morphs, I go into my object sequence and I can control A to select everything and say open. Press OK to the Y up and this will import all the objects as morph sliders. Once that's done, we go to step 17 where we click update to iClone. I have all my sliders here that I've just imported and all I have to do is update to iClone. This will bring all my morphs into iClone. And now in iClone, if I select my mesh and I go into the animation tab, if I press Morph Animator, it will open up all my morphs here that I have applied to my vest. Here is where we are going to the longest process, uh, the longest step in this process, which is create the morph animation. And we're going to skip every other frame and let me show you what that means. So because my Animation starts here at frame 20. Control left bracket to add that as the start of my animation. And I'm going to start animating here, creating the morphs here. I can double click on my accessory with my vest. I click here and I activate my morph track. Now I got my morph track here and you can see that all my sliders are here. You can later on add more animations uh, in the morph creator. Talking about the morph creator, I can now close it save memory here. I don't need to save that project. I already have it inside of um, iClone. So the first thing I want to do actually is come to my first frame and inside my Orf animator, I'll press default key. And that's going to set the default key of the sliders all set to zero in the beginning of the animation there. And then when I go to the start of the actual animation, I can set another default key. And let me just make this timeline a bit smaller here. And now in this first part is my first frame here. So I got that default key there. Now I can move two frames forward, 
set a default key and go into my next slider and carry on with this process default key next slider two frames forward default key next slider and so on carry on with this process until i have the the, the whole animation and then i can start seeing which frames i can get rid of now you can see there's some protrusion here in the knees and probably back here now this could be avoided if you increase the skin offset inside of marvelous designer but i am not worried about this because all of this um mesh the skin mesh under the garment i'm going to remove it inside of uh, character creator later on i'm going to delete all those faces so that's not going to happen in the an end animation so i'm going to keep doing this uh, keep going with this process two frames forward default key next slider until i finish the animation and then i'll be back so i'll pause the video now I won't pause the video just to show you something. If you, by any chance, you start having something like this going on, but there's a lot of protrusion, then that's because you're probably not in the right frame. Um, this animation, I believe, I started at frame 21 instead of frame 22. So you can change the position by selecting all of them. And it's actually frame 21 where I'm starting and now everything is fine. So at any point of your animation, you can start deleting or uh, some of the keyframes. What I mean by that is, for example, I'm here to that keyframe. I can try and get rid of this keyframe and see if the animation still works. So the less keyframes, the better. And maybe get rid of this keyframe and see if that works, if there are no protrusions. Yeah, that's working. Like I said, protrusions on the body are not really important to me. I'm only worried about protrusions here in the arms because they are going to... I'm not going to delete all the faces of the arms and I'm not going to delete all the faces here on the legs because I have other animations when the, those, the legs and that, that little bit of the, the arms are going to be see, seen. So, so potentially you could do instead of going two frames forward and doing every slider, you could do one, two, three, four, and then set a default key and look, I, am, I have uh, slider nine turned on, set a default key, skip slider 10, okay, and use the next slider and see if that works. And if that works, if there are no protrusions, you can carry on skipping a slider. If that doesn't work, you can always come back here, set a default key and add the in-between slider. Now, the reason why I didn't uh, just import it every other frame is because sometimes in between these frames, there can be protrusion. And then you can, with this system having all the sliders, you can come in and add that slider in between. So I'll carry on with this system. One, two, three, four. Default key, skip a slider, check if everything is okay, yeah, and carry on. Okay, so once that is done and you have all the keyframes there. Okay, so now we can go into step 19, save a collect clip, add motion plus to library. Because this is a looping animation, I want to make sure it's looping well. So if I turn on my looping here and I go into the end of animation, that is exactly where it stops on this frame. So I'll control right bracket and now I want to see if this animation is looping well and I found a frame here where the clothes protrudes out as you can see there and this is what I meant by being a good uh, option to import every single object now if I go into my morph animator here and I look to see which sliders are used Okay, so this slider in the middle is probably going to be fixing that issue for me. So if I now press the default key and use that slider, you can see that now the issue is fixed. If you're having a hard time in real time to check if um, the animation is looping properly, you can always come here and do a biframe so that your computer has time to process all the information and it's going to be easier to see 
the blending of the last part of the loop with the beginning of the loop. So if I now press play, you can see there's a, a big change there in the garment going from the last frame into the first frame. So what I can do is if I come here to my last, instead of using this last slider, I can blend into my first slider course this can create some issues there so I'll bring this just to the end of the animation I'll just zoom in on that so that my last frame is the same one as my first frame and somewhere in here I'll try to use one of the last sliders and see how that looks okay so now that the, the animation is complete now we can do the save collect clip at motion plus to library so let's do that part and now I don't really want this blending here all I want is the animation that was created so I have to select my character now I press avatar that should give me and I have this button selected obviously now I have both my morph uh, and my motion so I have my vest uh, morph animation and my motion all selected in there now I can do a collect clip here the collect clip track if I zoom in and make sure that my collect clip is actually in the right place there yep so right click on the collect clip add motion plus library and because I already have one called Grim Scare uh, I will now call this one Grim Scare Garment and save that now we can move to step 20 uh, click edit in character creator 3 and save the avatar in character creator 3 select our character go into modify and we press edit in character created 3 here we can go to the first frame press load avatar and here we can save a version of our character that it's going to be the version going into unreal so i already had the previous one here so if i press this this will save replace press ok and i have a saved version now remember i was gonna remove some of the skin so I'll do that now. If I go into scene, I can select my fake cloth that I imported. It was just a cloth coming from ZBrush, it was just a, a plane actually, that I used as cloth. So I, I went into the modify and uh, I transformed that into a cloth using transfer skin weights if I'm not wrong. And now here I can go into my hide body mesh tool with my cloth selected and I can start removing all the bits that I don't need. Not all of it. So I'm going to go into advanced if I control with mirror selected. If I control click parts of the arm that I want, parts of the leg that I want okay so I at least need those bits and if I come out okay so I'll save that again just go into my content here avatar press that button save that again step 21 now this is important that you first select the character and then you export with animation using the UV4 template so first select the character then we come here we go to export FBX cloth character we select the unreal template mesh and motion go to custom and we import the new animation which was this one which I just created okay deleted and faces we don't need them and insta LOD I don't usually use this I do the LODs within Unreal and I'm gonna choose T pose for unity and when you do this usually the frame rate goes to 60 so choose 30 after you do this now um, the only reason I'm doing this is because I've chosen a t-pose okay my character is in t-pose that's why I came here and did that now everything is set we press export press ok and I'm gonna export my character and now I can come here and import with UE4 and use the UE4 import plugin from Reillusion and that is this plugin if you want to find it you can click on get the tool for Unreal and there's more instructions in the Reillusion website on how you can install that. So now inside of Unreal Engine, I can just drag and drop my character into a folder. I'm going to choose high quality shader, press OK. Now for the import settings, 
make sure that you open this little tab up and you click on import T as reference pose and import morph targets and within animation choose animated time and open up the tab this tab is usually closed like that so if you open it up make sure you click on use default sample rate now you're gonna click on import all and let it import just wanted to point out here you can see that I have CC set up there meaning that the plugin is installed okay so once important you shouldn't have any errors in your message log and you can do a save all and now we can go to step 23 where we go to skeleton and then in retargeting options we set the garment to animation so we open up our skeleton we go into our retargeting options so show retargeting options we set our garment in this case is vest to animation and anything underneath it to animation okay make sure of course that you also set all your items that are not part of the original skeleton to animation so my synth which is, is weapon um, doing animation for that animation for that animation for that now the jaw and the skull it's also not part of the original skeleton there are accessories so I'm gonna set them to animation and my jaw uh, is also not part of the skeleton so often that I save and now I can open up animation and sometimes when it imports you can see that the, the vest is a bit off you can see it's a bit to the right and I think it's a bit back because the chest is protruding this takes us to this last step so last step step 24 offset garment if necessary and then we use the the plus key here the keyframe to fix that so the, how we can do this is simply by coming into vest and then if I just touch my gizmo here so I can press spacebar and change it I can then pause my animation and go to a frame where I can see where that is happening and usually it's just a little touch so forward and I think that should be enough to fix my animation I think I went forward too much okay so you'll have some protrusion there and maybe up okay so I'm gonna cycle through my animation see if there's any more situations and there's a bit of protrusion at the end there I think I went to the right to to the left too much so you you might need to do this in order to get it right and of course you can use more be more precise if you come here to your details and you come to the transform and input the numbers uh, yourself once you find the right position and everything is fine you make sure that you go into your frame your first frame you click on key you click apply and you save your animation so now if I just make sure by closing this and opening up my animation I now have everything in place and it's working fine that's it for this video I hope you got all the points the key points I'm gonna leave the that list this list I'll leave it in the description below so that you can have a reference to go to when you're going through this process now yes it is a lengthy process it's um, it's a boring process if I may but it gives you really good results um, you can try baked animation within we're using weights and it's not going to produce as good as results as you get within uh, marvelous designer there are other methods obviously cloth simulation in Maya in blender you can try that turn that into morph targets so I'll leave you this video and I'll see you on the next video